Hey guys, so we just got this new computer set up at our mixer station here at our church and I wanted to give you a quick rundown of what we're using it for and how useful it actually is. So let's get into it. So if you watched our recent tech tour update, you'll notice that this is new. This wasn't here before. So we had some applications running for our sound tech over here on our presentation computer and it was capable of running ProPresenter plus all the things that we needed for the mixer just fine. But as you can imagine during the service, you don't really have access to actually use the applications because you know it's running ProPresenter. So we had an extra M1 Mac Mini sitting around and so I thought, why not have a dedicated mixer computer because it should be plenty powerful enough to do just that. So that's what we have. We have this little 15 inch display up here um, and you can already see one of the applications that we're running is open sound meter. And so this is just a constant RTA reading of the room that also is giving us SPL readings. So why exactly do we need this when the mixer has RTA, you know, built into it? Well, you know, the mixer is only seeing the, the raw signal coming into the board and it's giving you RTA based off of that. Your room is gonna color the sound quite differently. And so as you can see, even without anything playing through the PA system, um, I have a pretty good idea of what's going on in the room as far as frequency. And then you can see that um, when I start talking, there's 50 something decibels of noise going on. And then if nothing's going on, it's 30 something. So that's pretty interesting to see. If you have any interest in checking this out, the software is actually free. You can donate to it if you feel led to, but it's called open sound meter. And I'll leave a link to that in the description if you wanna go check it out. I'll also be sure to leave a link to the reference mic that we use. It's very affordable comparatively. I think it's just over a hundred bucks and it gives you a nice accurate reading. Is it the most accurate that you can get? No, but for this scenario, it works just fine. It's giving you a flat frequency response so it's not coloring the sound at all. Um, and it's just, it's a really good buy, really good value for the money. All right, let's move on to the next app that we're using this for. And uh, this is Logic Pro. We use this to record tracks from the mixer so that we can do virtual playbacks. Um, and then we also record tracks so that we can, you know, mix them for videos on Collaborate Worship. And then the last thing that we're using this for is um, our playback app for running tracks. We actually run the tracks from a ninth gen iPad up there on the stage. The drummer is the one controlling them. And we are running it into an audio interface that gives us eight outs. So with eight outs, you know, we're running the tracks in stereo. We have one dedicated for the click, obviously. And then you have, you know, five more that you can split off and send to the board, you know, via the snake that's back there. So I believe currently we have stereo outs for the piano because we run our live piano in stereo. So if we don't have a piano player, the tracks are sending a stereo signal of the piano track directly to our piano faders here. That's really nice. And then uh, currently we only have one electric guitar player. So it's also sending another electric guitar part to this so that they have the ability to mix that in to taste. And then obviously we still have two more available in that audio interface that we can send back here. But obviously there's a lot more tracks going on inside of a backing track. So it's nice for them to be able to have control over the faders inside the app. Recently Playback did an update where you can sync two different devices together. So if we come back here to our iPad that's running the tracks here at the drums, I can go to our settings and I can go to Playback Remote and I can just turn that on. So then what we can do is we can go to the same thing here on this computer, go to playback remote, but instead of host, we're gonna go to remote up here, and then we're gonna go to refresh device list if it's not showing up. Obviously it's already there, so there it is. We're gonna load that up, bam. So now this computer is synced to that iPad. So any change that I make back here to any of the faders, even playing and pausing or switching the song, is gonna sync to the iPad back there. This is really handy for the person mixing. During rehearsal, if they need to adjust some of the tracks, they don't have to go all the way up to the stage, walk through everybody, and then finagle their way back to the iPad, adjust it. It, it was just a big hassle. So it's not 100% reliable. Uh, we have had, you know, connection issues where, you know, sometimes you gotta restart the playback app on the iPad, turn remote control back on. Uh, sometimes it disconnects, blah, blah, blah. But for the most part, it does work really well. They're really only using it during rehearsal. I mean, it is available to them during the service if they need to adjust something, but they usually get that all dialed in at rehearsal. 
I don't know if you care, but we're using a trackball mouse because there's just not a lot of room over here for a mouse to move around. It can just sit in that one spot and then you just use the trackball to move the mouse pointer. And then I just have a wired keyboard here. And then this display is just a 1080p 15.6 inch display that you can buy on Amazon. I'll leave a link to all this down in the description if you're curious. My review of the display, it looks as good as it cost. I think it was 80 bucks and it looks like an $80 display. It gets the job done, but don't expect anything fantastic out of it. And people were curious to know how you get your reference microphone routed to that software. You know, it's plugged into the X32. X32 is sending 32 channels to the computer, which is obviously how Logic Pro is receiving the tracks. But then when you go into open sound meter, it's not as simple as just picking 32 in, 32 out. So what we did is we use an app called Loopback and that's just doing some virtual routing. So it's taking the 32 channels that the X32 is sending, and then we're just making that kind of its own virtual input on the computer. So it just sees that one channel on the mixer as a separate input to be able to choose from. I know that sounds kind of complicated. If you're still confused and you want some help on setting this up yourself, I'll leave a free cheat sheet down in the description. So be sure to check that out. Um, if you want to see all the stuff up here, I'll leave our tech tours that we've done linked in the description as well. And that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions about it. I would love to answer them and I'll see you next time.